Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to part four of our build project for the Lakeside Slot Car Track. Well, where we left off last time was we got everything moved into the game room here. We've got a lot of small projects to do. I'm really anxious to get rid of all the heavy sawdusty stuff because I've got little uh, MDF footprints everywhere. I'd like to get rid of that. But this episode is going to be a lot of small little projects here and there, not so much big gigantic um, cutting large pieces of lumber and things like that. So I've been filming some of them as I go and we'll just tie a lot of these small pieces together this week and see if we can make some progress. So let's get started. Well the first little task that we need to do, I've got to go around the track and just ease the edges slightly. The Router bits that I used were brand new, and boy, these are surgically sharp edges. And so I need to take some 220 sandpaper and just ease the sharp edges, not only on the slot, but on the data where the braid goes, just to take that sharp corner off. So the two main sections of the track I've pulled apart slightly so that you can see the gap. And here's a sample piece of the braid. So here's what's going on. I want to braid both of these sections separately. I don't want to put the two pieces of track together and then braid the whole thing because I would have no options later if I needed to pull the track apart and work on it or something like that. So basically the braid is going to come along on each section and it's going to dive down and I will connect the pieces of braid mechanically and electrically underneath the tabletop. And so there's no real need for a lot of pressure on the braid to, to keep the continuity of electricity going. That will all happen when I attach the braid below. So I want this gap to be as small as possible. I want these two panels to fit pretty tight. So here's my plan. Remember we've got these fingers and every other finger is attached to a different piece of panel. So where whichever side of the, the panel the tab happens to be where the lane is, that's the side where I'm going to drill a couple of holes so I can feed the braid down through. But I want to do one other thing first, and that is I want to cut back the groove just slightly about the thickness of two pieces of braid, such that as the two pieces of braid come together, fold, make a right hand turn, and head down, that they don't keep the two pieces of track panel apart that I can get them tight together. So let's just do one as a sample so you can see. I haven't done anything here other than spread the panel apart and this tab right here that you see is connected to this piece of track. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark a vertical line at the edge because the braid tends to go to the outside of the slot. The braid doesn't go tight to the eighth inch slot. It goes out wide to the edge of that dado that was in there. We will take my little ruler and I drew a line here and I drew a line there, which gives me my two vertical edges. Then I'll take my knife and I'm going to score that edge of MDF. Put a nice score mark on it. If you're unfamiliar with this type of product, 
this medium density fiber board it's basically like sawdust and glue it's not like OSB where you have big chunks of wood the pieces of wood are really small okay so I scored down to the tab and now I'm going to give myself just a little visual reference point put a couple marks there that's about the thickness two thicknesses of braid this doesn't have to be super accurate again because I'm not depending on the pressure for electrical continuity that's all going to happen below the track so let me score this and score it here so I don't break stuff away okay then I've got a tiny little chisel and we really don't even need a hammer for this chisel is sharp enough I can just push down and I can pare that away Hope I'm not blocking the camera with my arms here. But I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. I can't make too many accommodations for the camera. Let me vacuum that out. Well, let me zoom in on the camera and see if you can uh, see what I've done with the chisel. Okay, so you can see there's just a little bit of a cutback, a little bit of a notch that I did, and that's going to receive two pieces of braid as they dive down. Now that that's done, I need to drill down, drill a couple of holes down against this new surface that I've created. So I'm going to mark the holes with this Forstner bit. It's a quarter inch in diameter. It's got a pin center and I want the hole to be not against the slot but against the edge here. finish off those with my quarter inch wood drill bit. Take the 
camera off the tripod. This, well, that'll be too wiggly, I think. But anyway, this hole doesn't look like it's in the right position, but that's just because the camera's on an angle. So the braid will be like this, or like this. And because of parallax, it, lo <laughs> it looks like the holes are in the wrong spot, but they're vertically aligned perfectly with that. So the braid will make a, a right hand turn and we'll go shooting down like that and the two panels will be able to squeeze together and not have a big gap in here. And I push these back together so you can see there's virtually no real big gap between the two panels but there is a gap down here which is about the thickness of two braid and that's what we want. The braid will come, turn and go down and come out on the bottom. And as long as I'm in the drilling mood, I went ahead and put the holes down in here. This is on the north end of the track, just before the turn, on, after the long straight. This is going to be the dead strip or a tiny piece of braid that's not connected to the other track braid and it doesn't have power to it. It's what the computer is going to listen to for the cars to complete a circuit across these two pieces of short braid and trigger a lap on the computer. And it was just cleaning up a few of the router marks there in what will be a water feature. Can't have a track that's named Lakeside without having a water feature. I mean I do live by an urban lake here and each of the tracks in our club has a name that is indicative of its geography or some feature of the track. They're not just random track names in our club. So this is going to be Lakeside. There will be a lake, but I'll, I'll talk about this later when we get down the road a bit. I intend to do some scenicing on the layout on our track here. However, I'm not going to go crazy with it because what we found that is that when we're racing and if you have an incident and your car leaves the slot and, and gets somewhere the tires get so terribly filled up with garbage. I mean, even when you get out of your lane and you get in the little marbly areas, they get dirty and dusty and then the car doesn't handle well at all. And so I'm not going to have a lot of dirt and grass and anything like that that would add a lot of dirt to the tires. It's just not fun to race the cars when they're not hooked up. So, no, it's not going to be as heavily scenic as like my HO Railroad is, but there will be some features and I'll be able to, as best I can, keep the track surface fairly clean from a lot of debris. Well, once again, the clock is my enemy. It's really speeding fast. I hope it's not because I'm just rambling. I hope there's enough information in these episodes to not only keep you interested, but to give you some helpful information as to exactly what I'm doing and why. Next time on our next video, we're going to have to fabricate a driver station and we're going to have to get ready to put some crash walls around the track. And then after that, we are getting really close to some of the final details where we're going to add some paint and then eventually we're going to be able to put some braid down and do the electronicals. So, I hope you can join me right here next time.